everyone. Alessandro here, and I've got Nina Colvin. I'm very grateful to have her on today during this, uh, these difficult times. And Nina is an accredited mindfulness teacher who works with mindfulness to reduce stress and anxiety. So I think it's something we could all do with these days. So welcome, Nina. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Great. And um, this is one of our chats that's going to go on YouTube and hopefully Facebook and all over the place. So um, just to start with, maybe my first question is, how, how did you actually get into this line of work yourself? What brought you into the mindfulness arena? Um, gosh, um, well, I've always meditated off and on uh, throughout my sort of teenage years and 20s. Never quite got into it. I always thought that would help with stress when I was in the corporate sector. And then um, when I was a, a busy mum, juggling childcare, uh, working, um, and looking after, um, having to look after my mum when she was ill, I never quite felt, I felt overwhelmed. I never quite felt I was doing anything properly or right. I wasn't quite looking after my business or my child or, or didn't feel like I was going to see my mum enough. Um, that, with that overwhelm, I, I, I was just constantly stressed, constantly exhausted. Um, and then one day, um, it was actually after, sadly, my mum passed away, um, I just saw this advert, an eight-week mindfulness course. And when I did that course, I felt it changed my life. I felt I could breathe again. I felt I had space, space in my mind. Um, and I felt I could just start enjoying life again. Um, so that really, um, just, just uh, started practicing it more regularly. And that's when I decided I wanted to share it. And I went on to um, a teacher training course for uh, mindfulness through an uh, uh, organization called Breathworks. How long ago was that then that you, you, uh, you became accredited or um, qualified if you? So that's about uh, four years ago now. Um, it's a, it's a, it can be up to a two year course um, um, and it's quite intense uh, training. It's about sort of developing your own personal mindfulness before you can teach it out there um, and become a accredited mindfulness teacher. Great. I think that's obviously the best way to do it is, is practice for yourself. And what have you found? I think during these COVID times, it's been so challenging for, for yeah. every being at home, you know, you know, worrying about the, the future, thinking about, you know, when things will get back to normal, if they ever do. Um, what, what have you found helpful, you know, the tools that you use in your own in your own life in the past sort of year or so, let's say? Wow, yes. And uh, well, uh, first of all, let's just say everyone's felt overwhelmed with with what's happening at the moment. I think in our own different ways, it, we've all felt overwhelmed and that's OK. Um, it's OK to say we've we've not always coped with it. It's it's something none of us have, have lived through before. Um, and we've all uh, I think people went up into their minds. We all did. And people catastrophized. We saw that with a panic buying with the toilet roll. What was that about? <laughs> Um, so uh, it's, it's about learning to come out of your busy mind. We tend to, we tend to um, focus on the negatives and it's learning to let go of that negatives and coming to the present moment and coming out of that busy mind down into your body. Um, and through mindfulness, we learn to just to be present, to let go of the past, let go of the future um, and keep coming back to your present moment. And one way to focus on the present is through your breath. The breath can't ever be in the past or the future. The breath is here and now. So we focus on the breath um, to come down out of your busy mind. One way, as, as you know, is come right down into your belly. Belly breathing is so important. And expect, feeling your belly expand as you breathe in and feeling it contract as you breathe out. Um, and another way, is actually going further down, all the way down to your feet. Um, we talk about grounding ourselves, feeling your feet flat on the ground. Imagine bringing your breath down to your feet and imagine feeling your breath in every little toe. I'm feeling this as I talk. Imagine massaging every little toe. And imagine, imagine massaging your whole foot with your breath. You can't go for a massage at the moment, so you can do your own little massage. And as you come down, all the way down to your feet, you've come right away from that busy mind of yours. Um, and you've helped calm your mind and your body. 
Um, so that's that's you know that's just one way of of just keep coming to the present moment, um, letting go of, of of those busy thoughts for now. Um, and as you found you've calmed that mind, you've actually cleared your mind. Um, and then you're ready to focus, to be more productive for the rest of the day and then work out, okay, this is what I can do. Not, oh, I can't do this, I can't go out, I can't, you know, we're all missing, very, I'm missing the gym, um, people are missing various, you know, activities. But once I've calmed my mind, it's, okay, what can I do now? What can I do? I've got space, I've got time. What is it I can do in this moment? Mm. That's a great, great reminder. And I could feel that and in, in Qigong as well, the main energy centers where you mentioned the, the lower abdomen area where we breathe down there. And that's also where we tend to gather our energy internally. So it all makes sense. And I think that's a great tip to, to help people. And I was quite intrigued. I, I, we spoke recently about, I think during lockdown, I think you mentioned about breaking your arm and the, how, how you help to reduce the pain. Tell us a little bit about how you manage that through your mindfulness. Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, well, I, I trained, actually trained in mindfulness um, to reduce stress, but also mindfulness in pain management. Um, but I mainly taught mindfulness um, to help with stress because I never felt I'd really experienced pain. And then when I broke my arm um, last year, that I had that tool ready. I knew what to do. Um, I was lying there in the tennis court where, where I fell and twisted my wrist. My hand was literally falling, dangling off. Um, and I could feel the panic. I could feel the pain, but I knew just to just let that go for now, just come into my present deep breathing. And I went to that belly. I went deep into that belly and I was just expanding it, breathing in. It doesn't matter, you can count to four breathing in, count out to six or eight. When you, when you take longer breaths out, it's calming your body and mind. And I was just doing that, the ambulance, they said it was gonna be two hours before it arrived. So I, I was just lying there, focusing on my breath. Otherwise I'd be shouting, screaming in pain. Everyone around me, my husband was, I could see him panicking and I was telling him, breathe to your belly, <laughs> breathe to your belly. Um, and, um, but afterwards as well, it's, it's, it's helped me a lot with my healing. Um, because one of the things you learn with mindfulness is you can go to a difficult experience, whether it's a, very carefully and gently and kindly, whether it's a difficult experience of stress or a difficult experience of pain, we tend to either get overwhelmed by it or ignore it. And I just went to the pain there was a lot of painkillers at the time and I wanted to just get off them. They were, my head was just fuzzy all the time. And I came off the painkillers and I gently went to the pain with the breath. Um, and as you, as you go to the pain, kind of with kindness to it, you're, you're, it's, like a, it's like a child or a friend, you're, you're nurturing that friend who's in pain um, and saying, it's okay, it's okay, you know, we're okay with it. Um, and again, if you want to just hold your fist really tight, um, as tight as you can. What's happened to your breath? Stopped. Yes. So when we're in pain or stressed, we tend to hold that area around our body um, um, in tightness and stress, and your and your breath has gone shallow or stopped. Now try and breathe into that into that tight fist. Some deep breathing into that tight fist. Yeah, it softens. It opens. It softens. It opens. <laughs> So you're opening the stress in your body. Um, and, it, and as you come into your body, and open the stress. And I was doing that to my arm because all around, the, all around the injury, your whole arm, or it can be your other arm compensating, your other shoulder, is stressed. And I was breathing into that stress. And as I was breathing out, I was letting go, letting go of the tension. And I could feel it letting go. And then I was able to do more movements because it was so stuck, having been in a cast for eight weeks. I could feel the movement again. And that's before any physio, I breathe into my tightness um, that helps let go of the, the tension. And the same with stress. When you're stressed, come down out of your mind. Notice where the stress is in your body. Quite often it's your shoulders, quite often it's your belly. And come down, whether it's your shoulders or your belly or your chest, bring your breath there. Take some deep breaths into there and notice how that softens. And then you'll notice that soften not only your physically, it's just soften your mind a little bit too. And then you feel, oh, okay, I've got a little bit of space. I can start 
you know you can you can focus again it's rather than that jumble that's going on in our in our mind you're coming down calming the mind calming the body and then you notice there's space for you to breathe yeah and that's great i, lo I love that story and i and i and i've noticed that in myself in my own practice sometimes with when i've been on retreats and sitting for hours with qigong um, when there is a pain just giving it some attention and the minute that the, the the pain that area gets the attention it seems to dissolve and then somewhere else hurts and then somewhere else. but it's yeah. it, we tend to run away from it in life and and i think even this whole covid situation is like hang on pay attention pause you're all on pause pay attention to your life to your breathing to slowing down to what's around you so I love that story. And, and um, just to sort of end off, we can, we can talk about um, your, your courses, what you offer. I'll put a link below so people can get in touch with you. But um, any ideas or tips now that people are homebound a lot, anything that people can do you know, in their daily lives um, to help them to be more present maybe? Yes, yeah, so as well as the, the focusing on the breathing, um, mindfulness is about, so, and, and the meditations uh, we teach, which is the more formal side, mindfulness is about how you bring it into your daily life. Um, and we're talking about, it can be a few seconds. And I always say to people, pause every, maybe every hour, just pause in your daily life. I call it mindful moments. And when you pause, so um, it could be with the breathing, it could be when you stop for your cup of tea or coffee really pause with that tea or coffee because um, we tend to have a sip doing something else on our computer or somewhere else another sip fully pause with it be fully present with it enjoy the warmth holding it in your hand the smell the taste and as it comes down your throat you know that warmth on these cold days if you're in the uk um, and you're enjoying it and you're not it's not just enjoyment um it, first of all you're, you're you're remembering to bring in the positives in your life this, this just can be little little things it doesn't have to be a great big thing it's bringing in the positives and letting go of the negatives and you're actually then producing those lovely calming hormones i do it with chocolate i have this thing about having my four o'clock chocolate treat and um uh, i'll now before i just eat it you know carry on on my computer and the next thing you know it's gone you've waited all day for that treat now i'll just stop pause i'll really enjoy that piece of chocolate that taste you know the flavors uh, the smell and enjoying you know that that sort of the burst it, it's it's the burst of flavor you feel when you really give it the present moment and again it's it's a nice positive feeling you're 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 remembering to bring in the positives rather than just carrying on in sort of auto mode that we tend to and again you, you are producing actually little by little those lovely calming hormones rather than keep being busy and the stressy hormones come up and then we wonder why we're exhausted at the end of the day you're doing little little steps so try of, of bringing up the calming hormones and notice how you feel just stopping for that tea or coffee stopping pausing for that coffee um, and that chocolate and also with the breathing, when you're, when you're, I just say to people, when you're waiting for the kettle to boil, breathe deeply into your belly, breathe down to your feet and just notice how that makes you feel. You've just come out of your mind. You've given yourself a little pause. Um, be kind to yourself. <laughs> we're we're not... rubbish at that. We, we, we've always been told to give to others, be kind to others, which is absolutely true. But you have to keep being kind to yourself as well. Otherwise you're just depleting yourself of energy so nice little treats for yourself take that bit longer in the shower really enjoy the warmth of the water imagine it sort of bring you energy of that lovely um sprinkle of water down your body yeah i love this idea of enjoying it as well because often we're doing something um and waiting for the next thing to happen you know like boiling the kettle thinking when is it going to boil so i can have the coffee when can i have the yeah. coffee so and it reminds me when my daughter was a teenager, you know, she'd be on her computer, you know, having her meals, you know, at home, you know, lunch or dinner. And then she'd have her meal and she'd go, I'm hungry. I said, but you've just eaten. And she hadn't realized she'd eaten because <laughs> she was on the computer. And it's like the body didn't even realize it was yeah. eating. Is it, is it going to absorb the goodness? Because does it even know what went in it? You know, and it's like that awareness like you say, you know, it brings the good hormones, happy hormones in and, and makes us feel more nourished as well. And 
enjoy life more. So I, I love those tips. Thank you so much. And just tell, can you tell our viewers um, about your courses? I know you have an eight week course. Could you just mention a little bit about those? Yes. So um, with, with most, uh, with a lot of mindfulness, there's, uh, there's a standard eight week course um, because they say they have found scientifically over eight weeks is when you start changing your brain network um, and it becomes habit after eight weeks um, of practicing the, so that we teach a meditation, um, a different meditation each week that you get to practice during the week. Um, some mindful techniques like the breathing um, and what, you, what else you can do during the day, you know, going out to nature, just spending that moment, smelling a flower, for example, for 20 seconds, enjoying that moment. Um, so we go through lots of different techniques and um, but also I have and I've been doing since lockdown I've had to go online like everyone else um, a, um, I, I call it Monday mindful moments and it's just half an hour every Monday from 12.30 to 1 just to pop on and have a few moments of calm um, we do a meditation and some breathing techniques and then you've still got time if you have a lunch break then for your lunch and whatever else you need to do um, and it's because it's a lunchtime one, I, it's a calming um, techniques, but it's also for you to be ready to focus and be productive for the rest of the day, the rest of the week. Um, if it's an evening one, I take you more deeper into um, mindful meditations that helps you sleep. Mm -hmm. Great. And what I'll do, I'll put the links below. So if people want to come on the eight week course, they, they just register yeah, on the link or get in touch with you. I'll put your yeah. phone number, email. Yeah. And is the next one is there one running at the moment or, or is there one there is one running at the moment there'll be another one um coming up in in february i'll put the dates down um with the contact you give yeah and um but yes and the and it's one-to-ones and small groups because it's online i keep it very small groups when i was live i had bigger groups but i like to be able to keep an eye on everyone um and i think it's easier to give feedback when you're in a small group um but one-to-ones are very popular um yeah. not, not a one -to -one, clients um adults just to say something adults over 18 it can be young adults um i mean i have clients from teachers business people um a lot of mums feeling overwhelmed um it, it, it varies yeah yeah and i think a lot of young people will be needing help whether now or in the near future you know um because there's a lot more stress you know with with the the you know the exams and universities and even my daughter who's at uni definitely much more challenging than it's ever been so hopefully yeah, yeah. And, I, and i just say to people hop you know call, call call me find out more but also you know just try one session you don't have to commit to an eight week session straight away it's always good to just try a session first see if you know how you respond to it see if it works for you yeah. um before you commit to anything yeah great Thank you for that. And the, and the session, do they book on, on your site or just get in touch with you to book a book? At the session? moment, get in touch with me. I'll, I'll leave with you my email address. Um, yeah. um, there's my Facebook page. My website is just coming back on soon. It's, it's been yeah. um, sort of redeveloped. At yeah. the, moment. Um, the easiest is to just contact me directly yeah. and, and um, we can chat uh, uh, online or over the phone or um, whatever's easiest. I'll put the email, all the details down. So yeah, I've taken some great tips for today to enjoy life, be present, breathe, ask for help. One of the first things you said, I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, I can't ask. We, we all at the moment just pick up the phone, phone whoever, you know, and help others if we can as well. I think it's yeah, the two ways. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel very good. Uh, earlier today, I had a, somebody from Ibiza, from the island, a you know, lady who's had cancer, who came on for a Qigong session. I, it's, it just feels amazing to reach people in other parts of the world and be able to help. And I think it's amazing work you're doing. Greatly needed. And thank you so much. And anything you'd like to say to finish off? I know you're very, you were very nervous. I think you've done so well here. Thank you. Yeah, it's my first time on uh, live YouTube. So, uh... Hope for many more now. You've encouraged me. <laughs> um, uh, well, just to say, um, it's okay. It's okay. We all, we all know it's it's, it, it's there's no, none of us have been through this. We're all getting up and down days, um, and it's okay. To, we know that as well. It's okay to have a down day. Don't feel constantly right. I've got to be positive. I've got to be strong. But when you're down, there's still things you can do about it, and, and it's things you've got. You've got your own inner strength. Um, it's things you can do yourself that's that's easy 
that just just take that breath down further. That's so easy. Um, and it's free. <laughs> Your own breath is free. <laughs> Free, take a breath, be kind to yourself. We'll leave people with those those messages. Yes. Absolutely, be kind to yourself. So much. And uh, this will go on YouTube and then we'll we'll talk again soon. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.